Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Triboelectric Tuesdays, where we dive into the technique of separating botanical particles using static electricity. If you're curious about this topic, keep watching. Today we'll review and discuss the test results of our cold plasma-based plasma static separator. These results also apply to manual static sift in general as the process achieves similar results. Wolverine Dabs conducted these independent tests, so make sure to follow his work on social media. Tests are conducted on a prototype cold plasma separator with many limitations that have since been overcome. The biomass used in these tests is dry trim from burnt oranges. The trim is pre-processed on a vibrating screen to remove fines and large particles like pistols and such. The sieve helps promote the liberation of particles, which, as you'll see, is important. Watch episode 17 if you want to understand this further. The COA for the initial feed tests at 41% total cannabinoids, most in their acidic form. If you've been paying attention, you know this is important. I didn't perform these tests, so don't take my word for it. I suggest you perform your own test and validate these results. Keith, I've seen tests in the 20 to 30% range. However, this has been sifted to remove contaminants, improving quality. You can download a copy of the COAs. The link is in the description. This is Keith. The first thing to note is that this analysis only represents 41.77% of the total mass. This is important because we need to understand that we do not have data on 58% of the sample. Unfortunately, some of it is terpenes, which we do not have an analysis of, and some of the other contaminants, perhaps proteins, lipids, and fats. I'm unaware of any lab that does lipids and fats testing. Let me know in the comments if you know someone who does this type of test. The main question I get regarding plasma static is the purity you can achieve with it. Bear with me a second and let's jump to the end of the video. 99% heads test at a total of 79.27% total cannabinoids. This means that the maximum amount this particular sample can test at is 79%. How do we know? Because we inspected the sample using microscopy to ensure that it was a clean sample of 99% heads. In this case, the balance is 5.5% terpenes. The rest, 15.23%, is unknown. Therefore, 79% is 100% of the cannabinoids achievable in this sample. Further refinement consists of removing trichome shells by pressing for rosin or solvent extraction, but that's another discussion. Just to clarify, again, if you press this for rosin, the maximum purity you can achieve in this particular sample is 79%. So for every 100 grams of static heads you press to rosin, the maximum you can get is roughly 85 grams uh, when terpenes are included. The other 15 grams that don't press will be shells in your pucks. The second most frequent question is how much final heads I'll get. Since we're collecting only round heads, the biomass itself will dictate this. So like water extraction, pick your biomass wisely. If you watch episode 16, my answers will make more sense. As a reference, in this example, we sifted 1,045 grams of flour. From that, we got 262 grams of keef, and from that keef, 68 grams of heads for a 6.51% yield. 6.5% yield may seem low if compared to solvent extraction, but it's high compared to water extraction. Fortunately, if your feed is dry, it's still dry after plasmostatic processing. It can be reprocessed by solvent extraction or by infusing it with a carrier oil such as coconut or MCT. There need not be a waste. On the other hand, if the wash has low yields in water extraction, the wet biomass is typically unfeasible to reprocess. I'm unaware of what to do with wet biomass other than compost it. Let me know in the comments what you do with your biomass to economically recover cannabinoids that didn't wash. Similarly, if your starting biomass is fresh frozen, the end product would not be wet and thus easily reprocessed. On a commercial scale, when using a cryogenic extractor like a tumbler or a sieve, this eliminates losses. As noted in our previous video, stocks contain cannabinoids, and though they negatively impact flavor, they should be reprocessed. Since this concentrated keef is dry, it can be easily reprocessed using BHO, CO2, or a solvent. The plasmostatic method makes great economic sense because it converts your biomass into a high-value product cost-effectively without any significant losses as waste. Now back to the beginning. This is what feed looks like. This is keef that was sifted before static processing. As stated previously, 
The purpose of sifting is to remove fines and large particles and to liberate heads. A head cannot be isolated if it's mechanically attached to a stock. It must be further processed for static to work. When visually inspecting your hash, note the proportion of heads to sisal trichomes and note the liberation of heads. As you sift your hash, periodically check for liberation. Consider an alternate processing method if the percentage of sisal trichomes is high. As for the plasma static process, this is what the heads look like on the collection plate. This is what we're concentrating. Notice that the sample is significantly cleaner and the proportion of heads is notably higher. However, the percentage of stocks and contaminants is still high. Two passes typically brings percentage of heads to about 95%. Analytics for plasma static are simple and fast. Visual inspection using microscopy is preferred in this process to skip HPLC or other expensive and time-consuming analytical methods. At each separation stage, visual inspection dictates what further processing steps are required, if any. When we see the COA for the plasma static process, we can see the cannabinoids increase from 41% to 57%. Remember, the maximum total cannabinoids in this sample is 79%. So in effect, we have increased the potency of this sample by almost 40% in one pass. Our newest system and method achieves better results in one pass. And as we perfect the method, this will improve. Needless to say, better biomass and better pre-processing will yield better results. The point is to highlight that each subsequent pass on the device enhances quality. Clean heads are reprocessed until a desired quality is achieved. Reprocessing is similarly done in manual static sift, each step increasing purity until the desired purity is achieved. As stated previously, checking your work each step of the process is a simple method to understand if further processing is beneficial. Generally, one to three passes on the plasma static are performed. Typically, melty hash is reprocessed to a high purity of 99%. Otherwise, a purity of 95% is sufficient the final pass can be done on plasma static or manually. But what about the other fractions generated? Analyzing the tails offers valuable insight into process optimization. The tails fraction of plasma static typically contains stocks, plant particles, dust, and even immature heads. By examining this fraction, you can determine the next steps. For example, if we note mostly C cell trichomes, we can send this to solvent extraction. If we see lots of heads attached to stocks, we can sieve this to decapitate and liberate those heads and reprocess to recover them. In this example, the COA came in at 12% from a starting key of 41%. As I've said before, this can and should be reprocessed. Fortunately, with plasma static, you have two clear choices. First would be solvent extraction to recover the high amount of cannabinoids. If this were water extraction, this would be waste. If you saw a large percentage of heads in this fraction, you could also sift this again to liberate heads and plasma static again to recover those heads quickly. Over time, you won't rely on COAs to make on-the-fly decisions about what to do with your KEEF as a microscopy analysis will make that apparent. So what can I process on this machine? Pretty much anything. To date, we have tested hemp and cannabis from room temperature to minus 20 Celsius, dry KEEF and stable fresh biomass, KEEF from trim or flower, CO2 or dry ice processed, and water extracted hash. More research is needed on hemp and cold temperature processing, so stay tuned for those results on that type of biomass. Please join us as we launch the Plasma Static and MJ BizCon later this month. I'd love to hear your thoughts and questions about Plasma Static, so drop your questions below. If you want to support our work, check out all of the great products we manufacture. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. If you found this video entertaining and you learned something today, please consider supporting us by clicking this button here. Much appreciated. Pissed off? What?